biggest areas that I can see that suppresses our thyroid function is stress and trauma. So I wanted to go over with you what the connection is, kind of some things that can happen, what to look for, maybe what to test for, um, and then give you some ideas of where you can begin next. So if you could do me a very big favor, if you could go ahead and subscribe to this channel and then hit that bell so you get a notification every time I release a new video. So stress you hear about all the time, how it can um, affect so many people on so many different levels, particularly with thyroid disease. And we hear about this all the time as well, of how closely connected the thyroid and the adrenals are. But stress and trauma, um, I mean, we all experience stress in our daily lives. But when we have something like chronic stress or something pretty dramatic, um, pretty traumatic, um, when it becomes to that extent and it becomes more of a chronic thing, we have more of like an emotional trauma or even like post-traumatic um, stress disorder like PTSD it can leave you kind of stuck in this fight or flight mode. And in turn, when we're um, in this stuck in this um, fight or flight mode, this can create something like cortisol dysfunction. When we have cortisol dysfunction like this and we are stuck in this fight or flight mode, that will contribute to inflammation. And this is one of the biggest triggers that I see, especially in my practice, that will contribute to autoimmune diseases, especially Hashimoto's. I have so many women that I've worked with um, and I'm currently working with that their big trigger for why they um, ended up with Hashimoto's is because of a traumatic event they had in their life or a, a chronic stress that they had in their life it will actually end up decreasing the usage of your thyroid hormones. And you're and gonna end up with tons of thyroid symptoms like fatigue and weight gain, brain fog, things like that. And so when we get stuck in that fight or flight mode and we create this inflammation, that's how this thyroid disease can ensue and it can just snowball. And then it feeds into the adrenals even more, then the adrenals give feedback to our um, thyroid that we don't need hormone production simply because we're in protection mode. Um, and when we also have trauma, I also wanted to mention minerals. This is a really big area that I feel like does not get talked very much about, but when we have something very traumatic, um, our body, if our, our body is very smart, it wants to protect us. And so one of the things that it does is it will actually release calcium out of our bone and teeth. And that's where it's supposed to remain. Um, we're not supposed to have a ton of it floating around, but it will leach out. It will leach out. And the reason it does is because when we create um, increased calcium out of our bone and teeth, you can create something called a calcium shell. And it's called a shell because it's literally shelling around your tissue. It can even shell around your thyroid. When this happens, this is kind of a numbing thing. It's literally numbing you so that you don't have to deal with and handle this emotional trauma and stress that you've had, particularly if it's been a pretty traumatic event. And I can vouch for this because I went through this myself many years ago. Um, and unfortunately when this happens, then that because of this like numbing and this calcium shell, your body will not utilize your thyroid hormones. So in other words, they cannot go inside your cells, but thyroid hormones may float around. So you might actually look like you have a pretty okay thyroid panel, by the way, that happens all the time, but what ends up happening is your body is not going to use your thyroid hormones. So they're not going to go inside the cells. Um, also potassium usually gets very depleted. We need potassium to sensitize your cells so that the thyroid hormone actually goes in. So that's why if you are experiencing an immense amount of stress, particularly chronic stress, it's been going on for a while, or you've had some past trauma, things like that. First of all, it's very important. You need to do a full thyroid panel. I would assess that right away. You need to make sure that you actually have thyroid hormones. You also need to rule out and see, do you have thyroid antibodies? Because like I said, stress can be the biggest trigger for autoimmune disease, especially Hashimoto. So you need to make sure to see, do we have an autoimmune connection here if we're having all these thyroid symptoms? Secondly, I would also consider getting um, a hair tissue mineral analysis test. So it's called HTMA. This is what I do with all my clients. Every single one gets one and I can actually see it on their hair test without them even telling me, I can already tell you've had some past tra trauma. You've had some past stress. Um, you, you had some um, really traumatic events um, in your, in your you know, even more recent life, but past life. And because you will see these calcium shells, I see this a lot. And so we have to work through that. And that is important for you to know that. So um, if you have questions with that, definitely um, drop a comment below or reach out to me and I can go over that with you more on how I do the testing um, and, and what that all entails. But it's very important to know these numbers because it's gonna be very hard for your body to use your thyroid hormone. If you have like things like elevated calcium or your potassium's dropped out, it's very challenging to correct 
um, how your body is using your thyroid hormone if you are, are, are battling that. And like I said, the first thing that calcium do, it's just going to kind of numb you and it's going to create that calcium shell. Um, things you can start now, start making small changes, start thinking about, okay, have I had stress in my life? Am I stressed right now? Have I had past trauma in my life? So taking a deep breath, slowing down, prioritize things that actually make you feel calm. If you know that you are dealing with stress, if you're continuous to continuing to do things that are adding more stress, that's not going to work for you right now. So pick things, do things that are going to actually slow you down and make you actually feel calm. And that's going to look different for every single person um, with what they like. Some like meditation, some like journaling, some will listen to music, some want to go for a walk with their dog. Like it's just going to be things that you like, but that's um, something that you can start right now to start to just at least settle this cortisol and this fight or flight response. You need to get out of that. So we need to settle our nervous system a little bit better. So those are things you can start right now. But like I mentioned, I would absolutely get a full thyroid panel. Um, I will drop a link below as well of my guide. It's called the secret to reading your thyroid blood test. And it goes over all the numbers that you need to get checked, the markers, the reference ranges, the optimal ones, because most lab reference ranges are not good. So I'll have that on there as well. And then why, why are you checking these markers and what you can do um, if you start seeing these markers are, are off as well. So just again, grab the link below. You can go get that free guide that will help guide you on what to do with that. And then, like I said, reach out to me if you want more information on the hair test. Um, and I hope this video helped you. Um, like I said, it's it's very common to be under stress like this, but it can really wreak havoc, especially when it becomes more of a chronic thing. Um, let me know if you have any questions and I will see you on the next video. Bye.